Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be covering the top 10 teams with the most cap space heading into this offseason. This is, this is a really good list to kind of dive into and dissect which teams are going to be the big players in free agency. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more NFL content. Now, kind of jumping into it here, uh, at number 10, we have the Detroit Lions. Now, when you look at the Detroit Lions, Brad Holmes has done a very, very nice job, not only in free agency, but the NFL draft. He's done a good job. Now, $23 million is a big deal when you're kind of looking at the grand scheme of things. They have some holes. Now, their offense was super efficient under Ben Johnson this year. Defensively, there was a lot to be desired. Uh, you know, and when you look at holistically what they have, it's a nice core. Defensively, they are getting there. It's just going to take a little bit more time. Therefore, I think $23 million is going to be sufficient to, to pick up some guys on some nice budget contracts that are going to fit in. I don't think they're going to make a ton of splashes per se with this cap number the way it is. However, I think they're going to position themselves not, you know, very, very well uh, moving into this free agency period. Th this is a good team. This is a really good football team, and they're going to continue to progress. Detroit is definitely going to be players. Now, the next team that we have here is the Seattle Seahawks. And John Schneider, looking at this foundation of the roster, they were close. Uh, this was a team that a lot of people weren't expecting to be even uh, close to the playoffs this past season. And, and Geno Smith really proved a lot of people wrong. John Schneider did a great job in the draft as well. I think in free agency, they're going to add a couple of nice complimentary pieces. They got to get the whole Geno Smith thing figured out. That's going to take a little bite into the salary cap space that is available for them. However, if they decide to draft a quarterback, that does change the trajectory of this offseason. But Geno Smith very well could be a priority for John Schneider. Next team we have is the Baltimore Ravens. Eric DaCosta has done an awesome job throughout the entire NFL draft process. A little bit of beef between him and Rashad Bateman as he said he's going to continue to swing for wide receivers. Does this make him a player in free agency? Maybe he looks at what the current market is and adds another wide receiver. And also the, the big thing that's kind of looming here for the Baltimore Ravens is Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is the big focal point uh, in this offseason, rightfully so. He's the franchise player. A lot of money has to be committed to him long term if they want to go that route to be completely transparent. I, I think Baltimore is in a position where they are very close to contending for the division crown. Uh, them and Cincinnati are, are very, very close in that division. Cleveland should be better next year. Pittsburgh should be better. It's a tough division to win, to be completely honest. And Baltimore's just done a nice, solid job throughout the last course of the couple of years here under Eric DaCosta's, you know, uh, agency here. So looking at what they have, $25 million is available to them. And a lot of this is going to hinge on the quarterback position. Now, once again, they're in the same spot that Seattle's in, kind of on hold, waiting to try to figure out what they're going to do. Next team that we have, New England Patriots. If you remember, uh, you know, a while back when they were, you know, big spenders for Hunter Henry, that offseason, they had accumulated so much in terms of actual uh, salary allotted during that period. It was a big deal. It, it was a lot of money that was exchanging hands. They were uh, looking to improve all across the all across the board. The tight end room was the one that they, they hit the hardest for sure. And I think they might be regretting that slightly. However, they bounced back nicely. $36 million to play with this offseason. They're going to make some upgrades defensively. You're going to look at them, invest some more money in that defensive line, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think the linebacker spot might get a little bit uh, a, a love as well. Maybe uh, maybe potentially a wide receiver. I, I think when you look at this wide receiver room, there has to be some improvements made. I When you kind of look at where they stand currently in that AFC East, right now they're, they're kind of looking up at some of their division rivals. You have Buffalo uh, who, you know, they're fantastic. Josh Allen and that team, Sean McDermott, they're solid, right? You have Miami, you have the Jets who have been the bottom feeders of the division for the last decade. And all of a sudden they're looking a lot more promising under the direction of Joe Douglas. New England's got to figure it out quick because they're, they're not a lot of excuses at this point. You know, Bill Belichick's had a couple of years post Tom Brady and they haven't been able to achieve what they've hoped at, at this point. It's very possible that they do finish uh, last in the division this upcoming season, which would be 
Uh, you know, a pretty big shocker, to be completely honest. New England needs to stay in, you know, stay relevant, uh, especially during the Bill Belichick era. And they're going to have to make some moves this offseason. Next team we have, the Cincinnati Bengals. It's crazy to think that they have $36 million with how good this roster has been. Big benefit to having a superstar quarterback on a rookie contract. That cannot be stated enough. How important that is in terms of actual roster construction. A lot of money left for some of your other playmakers. And just to fill out the rest of the roster, Jamar Chase is still on his rookie deal. Something that is looming, however, is the T. Higgins contract situation that should be monitored closely, considering how important of an asset he is to this offense. They got to get a deal done this offseason. I think they will get it done because when you look at the collection of assets they have on the offensive side of the football, super critical. They have to also address that offensive line as well. There's a lot of big decisions to be had this offseason with the Cincinnati Bengals. I I really do believe that T. Higgins is a main focal point. Next team we have is the Houston Texans. And when you look at the Houston Texans, this is a roster that is a little talent deficient. Now, I don't want Texans fans to be upset by that statement, but it's just a sheer fact of the matter. That's not to say that they can't get better this upcoming offseason. Free agency is going to be a great time for them to improve. Now, they have some seasoned veterans. They have a, a nice young mix of other players. I, I, I think when you look collectively at what they have, it's not enough to get them from the bottom of the barrel. Uh, th this team definitely has to make some improvements across the board, offensively, defensively, in the trenches, skill positions. They, they've got a decent start on it. Now, with the first-round picks, that's going to help having two first-rounders. But I think Houston has to maximize on this offseason. This should not be a last year heading into next year. They should want to compete a little bit more, especially with an opportunity to draft a quarterback this offseason. You must have the infrastructure around him and allow him to really thrive in a Houston Texans uniform. Therefore, Houston has a lot of pressure on them to uh, you know, put some playmakers around their franchise quarterback, whoever that ends up being critical offseason for the Texans and the New York Giants. Now the New York Giants were ultra competitive this year. Brian Dable completely changed the complexion of this franchise and what they've seen over the last couple of seasons. Now the, the big, dis, big decisions loom here. Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones is seeking $45 million a year. Now I, I think that you have to shoot high if you're Daniel Jones I don't think the Giants are going to give him that. I do think they are going to pay him this offseason because of the success that they had. The fact that they were able to go into Minnesota and win a playoff game is incredible to me. Minnesota had a nice season to that point. New York Giants spoiled it big time for them. Daniel Jones was a big reason why. Played well in that game. Made the plays he needed to make. Now, a lot of people were thinking at this point, Daniel Jones would no longer be the starter, but with Brian Dable and under his tutelage, all of a sudden they have a big decision coming. So a lot of the teams on this list have quarterback situations that are definitely worth keeping an eye on. The New York Giants is probably the most vital in this situation. You know, you, you look at Lamar Jackson and things of that nature. New York would have to make a big decision now if they don't end up re-signing Daniel Jones a couple of veterans on the market that very well could right the ship and steer it in the correct way with Brian Dable being the head coach next team that we have Las Vegas Raiders 46 million dollars Derek Carr is no longer a Raider what does this mean this offensive line needs to get revamped they need a quarterback are they going to be exploring the veteran you know free agent market are they going to be looking at the draft? Are they going to do a combination of both? That's a great question. We have to figure that out. I think they're going to be more so in the camp of selecting a quarterback in the draft and maybe re-signing a guy like Jared Stidham. I think that's kind of the, the trajectory that this team is going in. They're going to keep one veteran on roster, and they're going to go ahead and draft a quarterback, whether that be you know Will Levis or C.J. Stroud or whoever is there, Anthony Richardson once again. Las Vegas Raiders have a, a lot to do. Now, this is a tough division. You're, you've got Casey in it. You've got the Chargers in it, two teams that should be playoff teams next season. You have Denver, who's going to be a lot better under Sean Payton. I think the Raiders are in a 
critical spot here because Josh McDaniels is going to try to uh, maximize his time there. And I think that's going to result ultimately in this team wanting to be big spenders. Um, and I, I think holistically, uh, they're they're probably going to be very well could be last in the division. It really depends on how they adjust to this offseason. But $46 million, uh, a couple of holes on offense and defense. They have some, some playmakers for sure. They definitely do, especially on the offensive side of the ball. You have the Josh Jacobs decision. What are they going to do? The fact that they had declined his fifth-year option and he had a career year, he was a pro bowler, this guy was on a different planet this year. Therefore, are they going to re-sign him? Is he going elsewhere? Well, once again, that is another player that is going to eat up a big chunk of that money if he ends up re-signing. Now we have the Atlanta Falcons. Now with the Atlanta Falcons, $66 million heading into this offseason. Marcus Mariota's gone. That helps. But now it's the Desmond Ritter show. Is it them drafting a quarterback? Once again, uh, another team that needs a quarterback that is de you know, deficient at that spot. They're deficient for talent across the board. They need some edge rushers. Uh, you know, They need some more play out of their wide receiver position. Drake London was a great start in terms of the building block, but I think they need to continue to add on to that. I think they will address that wide receiver position in, in this offseason. And, you know, I, I look at this team as a really great chance to try to maximize on a lot of money being available. And I think the Falcons are in a beautiful spot. If they try to, they need to not commit a ton of money long term. That ends up hurting teams in the future and makes them really cap deficient. You look at Jacksonville as a team that was very similar to the Falcons at this position a couple of years ago. And right before that offseason had hit, there's a lot of talks of how much money they're going to spend in free agency. And it happened again the year after. Therefore, they're super tied up. I think the Falcons should take a different direction than what Jacksonville did. And then finally, we have the Chicago Bears, and they've been the talk of the offseason, $98 million. Ryan Poles coming over from Kansas City to the Bears. There's a lot to be said about what's currently going on there. Are they going to keep Justin Fields? Are they going to draft another quarterback and trade Justin Fields? I say they're going to opt and stay with Justin Fields as their franchise quarterback, but this team needs a lot of work. The fact that they had traded Roquan Smith was a big deal. He was a defensive pillar for this team, and I think that the, the direction Ryan Poles has set for himself is – I'm going to basically clean house and I'm going to get my guys. I'm going to pay for my free agents, which makes sense. GMs that come into a fresh situation need to cut ties with some of the players that they very well probably don't think are on the same level as the previous regime had you know, graded them at. I think Chicago Bears are in a perfect position here. Once again, you're, you're in the NFC North, very, very winnable division. Question marks about Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. You have the Minnesota Vikings who... Uh, their record was not fully indicative of what the talent level is on that team. I, I just, I don't believe in the Vikings as much long-term because they have a ton of salary cap issues heading into this off season. There, there's going to be some vital cuts that hurt this team. And then you had the Detroit Lions who are a borderline playoff team. Division's winnable. If you play your cards right, there's always a team that sneaks out and ends up becoming a division winner that people weren't really expecting, or at least a wild card team. That could be the Chicago Bears, depending on how they play the offseason. A lot of money to play with. Jacksonville had done it last year. They they committed a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes you, you do have to spend some money in order to put yourself in contention. Plus, having draft capital definitely helps, which I think the Chicago Bears not having their second round pick is very, very crucial. The fact that they had traded that away. I don't want to get into that trade, but nevertheless, Chicago Bears, $98 million. It's going to be a fun free agent period. You're going to see these Chicago Bears have just signed blank, blank, blank. It's going to be a lot of players moving and flowing through the free agency period, and it all starts in Chicago. Thanks again for stopping by. I appreciate you watching the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Also, leave a like if you did like this content. Thanks again, and we will catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.